Um, you know, I would really request if everybody could just at least show me their faces once, just once. Um, I'm a more of an individual, um, uh, like a re relating person. I resonate better if I can see everybody just once, and then you guys can all go off the screen however you want. Awesome. So sweet of you. Hi. <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah, we really, really, really appreciate it. Some of you know me personally, I know a little bit. Yeah, because it's it's, it's if it's related to um, understanding each other and understanding human like mind, understanding what we're going through. Um, we can really connect if we are at least seeing each other. I mean, you're seeing me, but I can understand your emotions. I can understand what you're going through. If I just look at you, I mean, that's at least what I'm capable of doing. And um, so that's why I just thought I should see a few of you. Yes, it's nice to have everybody turning on their cameras. OK, so um, uh, first of all, I would really like to thank Vibhuti Ma'am for giving me this chance. Um, it's a very difficult time. And um, I, I personally, I'm also going through in family, people falling ill, lost so many lives. It's pretty traumatic, huh? it is. And um, it's actually more than traumatic. It's becoming tiresome. It's like really troubling you mentally, and you're tired of it, and you want to get out, and you want to do things, right? So um, I think it is the best time to really give everybody a wellness break and to think about things. Um, you know, last time when the lockdown happened, I, I was actually sitting out in my terrace. And um, trust me, I've never sat for so many hours alone outside and just watched the birds and the, you know, there was nobody there. So you could just watch the birds and uh, stuff and listen to stuff around you. And the amount of stuff that got into my head, the amount of um, frequencies that passed through me, I was quite, um, I think I grew a lot. My whole family grew emotionally as well as spiritually. And um, yeah, so never, first of all, think of it as a time which is like entrapment, which is enslavement. It is a time for you to actually really connect with yourself and connect with your family. Because to tell you the truth, we don't do that. We don't really connect. Right. So um, let me start. Should I start with the presentation? Is everybody there or do we need to wait? Um, oh, the in charge. Should, we, should I start? Sarthak, uh, do you want to? Can we start, Sarthak? If they're not saying no, then we should just. Then start. I think she'll start, yes. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so um so our topic was wellness, right? Um you know to start before we start, I really want you to kind of understand what is wellness. I mean it's just we know the word wellness and we kind of, you know, understand it means about being well. But um, you see, dictionary defined it as a state of being in good health, especially as an actively pursued goal. A little different from what we thought of, like something that you wanted to pursue, what some, there were some goals and you start on doing that. And you are in a state of a good health mentally as well as you know physically. And um, when we talk about mental wellness, um, mental wellness is being mentally well. That means that your mind is in order. Means that you are um, that you are functioning in your best interest. You are able to think, feel and act in ways that create a positive impact on your physical and social well-being. So more like, how are you with your friends? How are you with your 
family how are you with your people around you that really is what actually wellness is all about and mental wellness is all about and mental health is it's a it's characterized by a person's ability to fulfill a number of key functions and activities including including the ability to learn the ability to feel express and manage a range of positive and negative emotions it's very important to understand that how can you manage between a negative and this whole range of negative positive emotions the ability to form and maintain good relationship with others how does one really do that that is going to be the more mostly my discussion today and um my seminars are pretty interactive some of them some of you have attended it um please if you have a question or if you feel you don't agree with me you have your rights to that and you don't have to agree with me huh? you have to evaluate what i say with already something that you know of or something that you you know have read so it's just see the whole um the whole understanding and knowledge that i have gained and i have acquired these skills is out of a lot of humanitarian studies of a lot of people it took about good 50 60 years of Uh, people in the mental health and um, their understanding on um, human mind on what the human behaviors emotions that's what i have actually studied and understood and trained myself in i'm not a psychologist i'm not a psychiatrist i am just a life coach i have not a medical trainer practitioner But yes i have trained myself in health and nutrition at the end of it i'll guide you how to really help with simple stuff to make your mind and the neurons in your head your brain really function and have your you know um active hormones activated and feel very happy about it, the happy ones so yeah so going on to the next thing we talk about mental wellness we think we feel we act and how can we really remain mentally stable and that's the key question here um so this is a very difficult quest like answer to this question how can we actually achieve sanity um especially in these times when i see when we see people around us suffering the news is so morbid it's so sad there is so much bad happening how can you really have a mental sanity when you want to go out have fun enjoy and you're like trapped in a little box a luxury box a house and we cannot actually go out and when we go out we go out in so much fear that it's like it's not really going out we still inside our head we still trapped in that mind right so um what really is happening here what are we really understanding here so somebody you know a very great uh, author this is this quote is not by me but he said a mind that is enslaved is weak a mind that is free is powerful and all the power there is is defined by the contained by and contained in freedom so what is really freedom what is what are really your barriers can you really achieve mental freedom tell you the truth you can i really wouldn't have said this if i wasn't in this 10 years back i wasn't really agreeing with this as well i thought no i mean if i'm mentally down if i'm emotionally upset if i'm depressed if i've lost somebody in my family my life is gone but no i'm not saying that you're going to be you know cold hearted but yes you become mentally very powerful and very strong so how do we go about that So let me give you an example of a child who has um, lost a little toy. Okay, and um, he's very sad. Now you can't really tell that child that hey, you know, get happy and all that. You can't do that. So how do you handle that trauma that he's going through? He's lost somebody. He's lost like a dog or something. And um, 
how do you hand how you tell him to handle that to understand this mysterious thing it is just half an inch back of your forehead the mind um it's not a bio biology class right we just simply need to understand the mechanics of it and here is what really explains you how does a mind work if i could just make you understand a little briefing of mind being divided into two parts mind which is analytical which is originally designed to be analytical you are supposed to be a 100% analytical brain with logic certainty confidence but there is a parallel mind that comes in which causes insecurity self doubt irrationality we call that a mind which is reactive what causes this reactive mind to seep in why do we become less analytical a lot of times so um how does that happen right so for example i'll give you um a very simple example i think you guys can relate with it more you see your boyfriend or your girlfriend cheating on you i mean you see her whatever and what is your first reaction you're quite pissed off you're very angry um you want to really go bash that person up and um or the second idea would be to just go in your room shut yourself away maybe go in a bar have a drink or sit in your room and have a joint isn't it or just cry alone that's all is what you're going to do so if you could take that as an example of a mind which is now come down to insecurity self doubt irrationality i mean of course it's natural to be angry with seeing your partner cheating on you but there is a logic to it there is a, a kind of a way to go about it in an analytical way but why do we actually go and shut ourselves why do we go and make ourselves do stuff which is really going to technically harm us why does that happen understand your mind as a a, a time track where you have various pictures stored in your mind um please let me know if i'm not making sense huh? i would really because i can't see everybody's faces yeah, yeah i think i can see now so do let me know if if i'm running fast and if i'm does i don't make sense to anybody i would really appreciate that um, it makes sense okay good thank you so much um you know just stop me i am also technology savvy um challenge dear <laughs> okay so um so yeah so i mean i uh, think about it in a in a way that you whatever you see if everybody could just close their eyes and i would tell you to imagine a picture of a cat i mean please let me know if you're doing it close your eyes and just see a picture of a cat has everybody been able to do that yes yes ma'am yeah okay so you can open your eyes now so your the cat is um, an image that you have in your head right so imagine every incident everything that you are actually seeing listening the perceptions that absorb everything from touch feel smell sensations everything gets recorded in your mind in your cell it's a cellular recording it's it's a medical proven fact right and how are you recording it you're recording it in pictures you do recollect pictures you do recollect words you do recollect incidents right and what so imagine you have two parallel incidents you have a happy incident and you have a traumatic incident an accident a trauma a fight getting hurt losing somebody dear one all these are not recorded in a state of rational self why because they are in a state of emotionally going down right you're not in a happy state imagine yourself to be in a very happy state that's an emotional high and imagine yourself to be in a sad state that's an emotional low right so how is it getting recorded it's not getting recorded together it's getting recorded in separate 
compartments. A compartment which is going to be one filled with grief or with all your traumatic experiences and one with all your happiness. What really comes back to you instantaneously when you are feeling low, when you are, when you are tired, when you have an experience, something sad? Do you get happy emotions, a happy incident or a happy picture in your head when you have a fight with somebody? Right? Will you get a happy picture? Yes, ma'am. Will you? I Same guess then. so for me, I will okay. get like, if something sad has happened, so I will think of something happy. Something happy of that person would come into my mind like that thing is no more like. Okay. Okay, Something that's very like nice it. if you're able to do that. What if you have had a very bad experience and the person has beaten you up? I don't know. Maybe that changed with the situation. Right? No, I'm talking about a traumatic experience. I'm talking yeah. about losing somebody, somebody dying, somebody you're... Yeah, you'll at that moment, you're not going to laugh, right? You're going to be sad. And then you're going to remember the good times about the person, but you're going to grieve, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, if you're beaten up or if you're like, you know, a lot of stuff like bad things happen to you. Anybody said bad stuff to you, you were not, you're not going to experience happiness there. You're definitely going to experience a sad emotion, right? And you're going to get all the sad emotional pictures about your lives and about similar incidences. What's happening here is the entire trail of bad incidences start running in a subconscious level. And this is actually a mind study. This is not um, a, a kind of a, just an analysis done. This was done on understanding of about almost 50,000 people. And it was understood that, yes, when you run a, a bad incident or when you recollect a bad incident, you will recollect more bad incidents. You're not going to recollect happy ones. But if I were to start making you recollect happy incidents, I'm going to make, then you're going to run a happy incident. But that is because I'm going to make you recollect it. But a natural form, you will recollect. If you're going through a bad emotion, you will only recollect bad emotions. Bad, say, until or unless you're a, you, you have a very positive thing and you, for, for that moment, temporarily, you will still recollect bad emotions. Or we call that mis-emotions. Emotions which are wrongly timed that time. Or... Not wrongly timed, but they just kind of are just coming. They just keep on coming. So coming back to the fact that mind gets divided into two things. That's how a mind mechanism works. Can somebody connect with this and give me an example if somebody has sort of understood it? Or I just want to know what is your, how do you go with it? How are you thinking about it? Has anybody... Connected with it? Can you give me an example? Oh, ma'am. Yeah. Whenever we uh, feel something of this sort, we tend to make ourselves a little numb. I don't know what others, but we exactly. tend to make ourselves a little numb, uh, like devoid uh, of emotions and feelings. Perfect. Start something like running away from it. Exactly. Fabulous. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Can I add to that? I mean, it's, it's like after a certain point that, you know, you don't feel those extreme emotions only. Like, essentially, when you lose someone in your family, you're supposed to feel really sad. You're supposed to feel like a lot of grief, but you don't feel any of that. Same goes for like when you're really happy. You don't yeah. feel any of that. Exactly. Fabulous. Exactly my point. So you're not going to feel, think, remember, uh, um, a, a, a time where you were having fun. You either go numb or some people just go deep into grief. Everybody has a different way of reacting to a, a bad emotion, right? Or a, or a sad emotion. So yes, exactly. You do disconnect. You do want to. Why? Because you natively, as a human being, you don't like to stay sad. You don't like to stay in a condition of complete depression or sadness or like this time. We all want this corona to disappear. We all want 
to come back to a normal life. Yes, we like the idea of sitting at home. Some of us, like my younger daughter loves school. This has been her wish since childhood to have homeschooling. So she is the happiest for this time lockdown. Her 12th has gone through sitting at home. So yeah, <laughs> but no, none of us want to sit at home. None. We all want to go out, go meet our friends, go out for movies and do see stuff like that, right? So yes, that's our native state. And what do we do? We depart from it. When we are not able to accept, we are not able to understand or take this emo bad emotion or sad emotion, we're not able to confront it, we actually do depart from it. We have a shutdown, a mechanism that shuts you off it. But that is also, again, an emotion, by the way. I will explain that to you further on. It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's a form of an emotion. So, like you said, move away. That was exactly my next point. So how are you really going to understand or how are you really going to actually handle this thing? Hang on, what is it saying? Yeah, so, yeah. So imagine, now this is a very nice quote and I'll tell you what it really means. One could say that, say then that life is a game and that the ability to play a game consists of tolerance from freedom and barriers and an insight into purposes with the power of choice over participation. This is a little tricky one. Just read it again. It says one could say then that life is a game. So imagine if you could just imagine life being a game, play a game of football, just hypothetically think it like that. And that the ability to play a game consists of tolerance of freedom. You see, too much freedom is going to drive you insane. Imagine if you were, um, everything was completely free. Would there be a life or a, would there be a society which is sane? Would somebody agree with me or disagree with me on that? Who would like to be complete, would like to have a complete freedom? Complete freedom. I mean, no restriction, nothing whatsoever. Anybody could go anywhere. I'm not talking about going anywhere. Like anybody would pick up anybody's girlfriend. Anybody could do anything. I'm literally talking about full freedom. Will that be a sanity or a sane environment? Um, exactly, right? So the tolerance for freedom means that you should be able to understand what is freedom and be yourself in a tolerant way to actually accept freedom. And most of all, the barrier and an insight into purposes. What really are your purposes? Which is the most important for criteria here is a power of choice over participation. How many of us do we really have power of choice? How many of us really decide what we want to do for ourselves? That's exactly what is the main key to it. So if you could imagine your life to a game, and then life, the whole anatomy of life is actually these three words, freedom, barriers, purposes. Here, your freedom is the ability to play the game, football. You have the ball in front of you. You are free to kick it wherever you want to. The barrier is the goalkeeper who's going to actually stop you from making the goal. And your purpose is to dodge him and make the goal. Simple as that. Now let's bring this to our daily life. How do we do that? Uh, when I decrease, I do something on the screen. Is everybody able to see the, the, the um, PPT, the presentation? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, like I said, I'm a little challenged, so please, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so if you've related with your life, um, since we're everybody's here, architecture student, and I'm going to just mention that. So, all your purpose 
or your main goal in life was to become an architect, right? That maybe not in your life, but right now, as of now, you're all trying to achieve the the purpose of being uh, architects, right? Yeah, I think it's all related to that. Or later that I will need one minute. Somebody is this help. I have done some error here. Please. Mark, uh, just click on the pin icon. Just click on the pin icon. Pin. Hey, I am very. Can I just hold hold. One minute. I just call Gurmeer. <laughs> Sorry. What have I done? Okay. Thank you so much. No, no. I wanted this one. Yeah. Could okay. you make the Could you make your screen uh, full screen because we can't see your. Uh, screen fully it's small okay Meher will do that <laughs> sorry i didn't want to interrupt because okay thank yeah, you so perfect. much no and full screen full screen. okay yeah perfect yeah. perfect all right thank you i'm so sorry ma'am <laughs> okay so yeah so here um so imagine like now for everybody wanted to be here are trying and achieving to be architects right so you could say those were your those were your purposes. Um, well, not all of you are going to end up being architects. People are going to choose different lines. I'm professionally, originally, you know, I have an architectural firm and I've been in this profession for 30 years. <laughs> I know um, I, for the one of first one who's, who's completely changed my course. I'm not discouraging here, but yes, not everybody ends up being what they really plan. Life makes you, life takes you in different journeys and you decide. But the main purpose here is actually to right now is to become architects, to establish yourself and um, yeah, end up pursuing architecture. Let's just take that right now as a hypothetical condition, the case that we're going to do. So you joined the college. There was thought of being a lot of freedom that you're going to be free to do and i'm sure a lot of you have attained a lot of um art a lot of creativity in this line which uh, you couldn't have imagined before um you know how how you have learned different ways of literally looking at a square you know or a, or a, or another geometrical figure i mean it was always a line that's it but this profession made you turn around and see it in a different angle, a 3D perspective to it. So imagine that was your purpose. You got your freedom. Now your barriers came in. Barriers were um, competitions. Um, you want to actually do well, or you have somebody, um, you know, somebody not saying nice about you. You have politics. You have a lot of stuff that goes on in basic college life. Some teachers are not happy with you. You get some invalidation. That's your barrier. What is happening there? Not everybody is able to overcome the barrier. Sometimes some people have problems in families. That's your barrier. Sometimes you are not able to pursue it because of, I mean, maybe not in this college, but in some colleges because of financial problems, because there's a loss. So there are billion barriers that come in your way to achieve your purpose. What do you do? Some of you give up, but you see a footballer will not give up. He will continue to target the goal. So that's why I said, if you could imagine your life as a game, you can actually really relate with it and understand it, that you will have barriers, you have a purpose, and actually freedom is achieved with that so this whole system is then reversed we start with a purpose we have the barrier and we get freedom and any freedom is only freedom if there is barrier or else there is no definition of freedom that's the true definition of freedom because we have barriers we have stops we learn to persevere we learn to achieve our goals we learn to make it hard and that's how we actually get the win in the game. It's as simple as that. Does it make sense? And that is where, yeah, somebody was saying something? No, no, I just said yeah. 
Oh, okay. And that is where the mind comes in. Why and how does the mind overcome these barriers? Because everything that you're doing is because of the mind. Your mind tells you shut up. The mind tells you to shut off. The mind tells you to stop working. Your mind tells you to stop it and go take a drag or go have a smoke. Your mind tells you, okay, I don't want to do it now. Let's do it tomorrow. Right? It's the mind that's controlling you. The mind is actually the cause on your purpose. You are an effect of this mind. Going back to this, the reactive mind and the analytical mind, the logic mind and the insecurity mind, the mind which is going to be in self-doubt because somebody said something mean to you, some teacher said something that probably was for your own benefit as per the teacher, but yeah, he didn't connect with you, agreed. Or somebody said something at home, you know, you could get an validation from home or anywhere. Or you go out in the field, you do a couple of projects and you realize, oh God, it's horrible out there. People have no value for you. A lot of doubts, a lot of stops are going to be there. But the logic mind is actually going to overcome it. The mind that has confidence is going to overcome it. Right? And how are we going to achieve that? Man in affinity with man survives and the survival is pressure. Affinity means a simple word. It doesn't mean love. The definition of affinity is simply your wantingness to be with somebody, your agreement to look at somebody, your likingness for something. You can have affinity with a pen, a cat, a man, a car, that's what affinity is. The ability to be able to be in the same space for with the other one is affinity. So how, why is it that, what is it that's causing all these things for the mind to stay in a rational state? This is what comes to my main topic here. To understand life in a pie. If I would just tell you that actually life is all just this pie, eight simple urges, eight simple desires, eight simple, we call them dynamics because life is so huge and dynamic means to go in different, a wide range. And that's what life is all about. To understand mind, to understand human relationships, to understand what is happening around us, you have to go a little bit deeper into the knowledge of life. I mean, I'm not taking you to a Buddha walk or I'm not going to take you to a Sadhguru lecture. My whole understanding and study on this is very scientific. And I'm sure you will agree with it when I come tell you more about it. It's a very scientific understanding of life and mind and human relationships. So let's start with the first one is, um, I can't pinpoint it here, but yeah, uh, oh yeah, here. So this one, the self. So this number one is self dynamic, the urge to survive in life towards self. What do you mean by self? I mean, if somebody could tell me, what is your understanding of self? It is like the thing. Sorry? It is like who am I? Like this, this is myself. Yeah. And what would you do with yourself? Like what are the things that you like to do to yourself? Things that are good for me, maybe health wise, or you like to do good hobbies for yourself. Yeah, perfect. Actually, yes. Self has got to do with everything that is going to do about taking care of me, be it gymming, be it um, nutrition, be it dancing, be it um, anything that uh, like some people love to go for spas, some people like to go for lunches, some people like to meet people, some people like to do charity, some people like to go and help others. So that's a self thing, not for anybody else, but for self, right? So that is the first urge. A baby is born. His first urge is give me milk. He's not bothered about anything else. He poops, she poops, 
The first urge is clean my shit, isn't it? So that's the first self, first self urge or the first self dynamic of existence. Food, clean, food, sleep, right? That's the first. Second is our second urge as we grow up, we want to have a partner. We want to have procure children, a stable partner, which is your whatever. If you, if you want to get married, you don't want to get married. New generation, it doesn't matter. But as far as you have a stable partner, somebody you can have a life where you are your sexual partner and your family where you procure children, right? That's everybody's urge. Right now, maybe you don't want children, but definitely to have a partner, right? Eventually, maybe you're 30, 35, you'd want to have children, isn't it? The third one is actually a group urge. What exactly are you doing now? College? Your, um, um, the presidents or the groups which are involved in management committees and the student councils or different various groups in colleges or if you could be a, also be a part of, a, of another group like a football team, right? If you go out to work, your office, that's your survival. You want to survive well in a group. Friends, parents don't come in this. And by the way, on the second urge, second dynamic, when you're still not married, right now your parents are your second urge to survive through the parents, to live with them, to make sure they're fine. They will always be your second urge, a dynamic here. But primarily, man wants to have a partner, have have children, life going on, right? That's the first innate desire of man. Then is the group, then is the mankind. Not a lot of us right now, or maybe a lot of us are thinking about mankind, especially right now, yes, with the way the world is going, with the way India is going, mankind is pretty much a, a dynamic that needs help, that needs attention. And we all feel for mankind as of now. A third, uh, sorry, a fourth urge, a fifth urge is uh, animal and nature. I don't know, a lot of people don't like animals. A lot of people love animals, but we need them. Okay? We need our animals. We need, our, we need the nature. We need to have our environment in balance. Even if you don't urge for it, and you don't have a, a very strong desire to it, you definitely don't want to live in a land with nothing right like moon or mars or whatever so that's our urge a sixth urge is very important it's actually a physical universe urge the desire to actually have so we have actually just what we've done is it's it's the first alphabets of the words have been put together and it's called mest which actually means matter energy space and time matter is what everything exists in the universe energy is everything that you see the light the air the 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 frequencies everything that's around you space is the place that you're in your house your country or a garden or any place that you're in the space and time i know you what time is so the entire physical universe is made of these four things matter energy space and time and we all have desires to have that we all want a house we all want good cars we all want to wear good clothes we all want to eat good food we all actually want to have a good physical universe right a seventh urge is spirit a spirit i mean an understanding to spirituality or what a spirit is. Not a lot of us at this age are really interested. I I wasn't ever actually, but yes, that age I wasn't. But yeah, there comes a time in life when you really want to know who am I, you know, or what is spirit. And the eighth dynamic is infinity or God. And that's a very personal dynamic, but everybody urges to actually understand or know God or be connected to 
Some don't want, some want. It's a very personal thing. But at least that thing exists. The dynamic is there. Can you think of anything else that I've put in these eight urges? Anything else that is left in life? Can you think of anything else? All these eight urges, anything else it is missed out? Can anybody think of anything? Yes, no? No, no, no I think it covers it all. Mm -hmm. life. This is life. I'm talking about life. The dynamics of existence. And what is existence? Life. If you exist, there is life. You don't exist, there's no life. Isn't it? Yes. There's nothing else. Whoever has made this has done a brilliant job. I haven't made this. And um, is actually compiled life in a simple pie. Eight simple compartments. There is more, but right now, we desire these eight. And what happens when we are not really looking at it? A further manifestation of these dynamics is that they could be represented as a series of concentric circle, wherein the first dynamic would be at the center and each new dynamic would be successfully, successively, successively a circle outside it. So imagine you in the center and all the other dynamics in a concentric circle around you. If you are complete, will you really, only then you will understand your second dynamic, which is your partner or your mother or your father or your brother, you will not understand them if you are mentally not balanced. If you are disturbed, if you are troubled in your heart, you're not going to really understand what they're trying to tell you. Same goes for your group. You may understand one friend, but you will not understand the other friend. And you may not understand what the hell is this college trying to tell me or whoever group that you can meet in office, right? Mankind, oh, come on, you're not going to give a damn. You're troubled. You're, die. you're crying inside. Do you care? I mean, a little bit, yes. Looking at them, you'll be more hurt. You'll be more troubled. And I don't think so you'd care about animals or, or plants. Come to material. Yes, you might just want to stick on to your little possessions because you think that's the only thing that's going to keep you happy. I'm very depressed. Let me go grab a drink. That's messed. And forget about spiritual and God. Maybe some of you will go and sit in the temple or a gurdwara or a church or whatever or a mosque and would like to pray when they're depressed. But I don't know how many at your age really care about it. Yeah. I wouldn't really if I'm depressed. I would be like, excuse me, I want to shut myself in the room. Isn't it? What happens to these other dynamics? That's when their life goes out. That's when you don't really have a good understanding and a balanced relationship with anybody. That's where your mind starts becoming weak. That's when everything starts crumbling around you. Because you are not at your best self. You are not mentally strong. You are not able to, to have, once again, logic, certainty, and confidence. You're going to be insecure. You're going to be in self-doubt. And you are going to be rational. OK, your mom, you're very, very depressed for whatever reasons. OK, you're feeling low. Your mom comes and tells you, eat your food. You don't feel like eating and you get so irritated with her. Your mom tells you to clean the room. Your mom comes and tells you to pick up your bag or whatever. You're like, come on, give me a break. You want to get out of the house? This time you can't even get out of the house. You're sitting and doing something on computer and your mom or dad, whoever, I'm just giving an example. Somebody in the house comes and tells you, they're forever on the, on the computer. 
right? You're frustrated. You want to do some work. You're not able to do it. And here you get a comment. What do you do? You cave in more. Your self is actually not really growing. Your self is actually caving in, shrinking here. And so all these dynamics are going away from you. They're not going to be around you. They're not going to actually be in this beautiful, colorful self state. Isn't it? How many of you would agree or disagree? Anybody disagrees? Please do tell me. Um, I agree, but I have one question around sure, this. Please. please. So, yes. um, if, right, you said that you, you have to be at your best mental state to be able to balance out everything. Now we all know that like that's a very idealistic scenario there are exactly. very scenarios where you can't be at your best exactly i'm going to come to that and so i mean at that point obviously this disconnect starts happening with all these other factors exactly. and i mean then what are you supposed to do because as you just said you're supposed to i mean being with a disconnect with such other these other factors is not the best thing to happen but yes. it does happen yes exactly it always happens and it will happen and that is where exactly once you understand first see i'll tell you um how do we do is okay so you have got imagine you have a problem or you have to design something and i'm gonna make you understand it with what you guys work with you have to design something you've been given this little piece of box supposing and you've been told that you've got to do some creativity on it it's just a square box okay now you don't know what to do and you are literally thinking of various different ways how to understand it you will first actually go and see what is the box right what is the box made of you see the box won't you would you would you yes. not see the box first? Yes. yes. Now the theory of understanding the mind is reversed here. First, I'm making you see really what really is happening around you rather than what is happening inside of you. I've told you what's happening inside of you. You know damn well what's happening inside of you, right? Yeah. But first, understand what's happening around you. What is causing these things to happen to you? First, see that box. First, see that what is given to you is actually a thing that is really existing there. And then I'll give you by the end of it how to go about it. But I must tell you, every individual is different. How you regain from problems is very different from how your friend will regain, how any other person will be able to handle a problem. So it's not like if I tell you, OK, all of you close your eyes and say this word and everybody's free from the mental derangement or mental problems. No, it's not going to happen. It's not a mantra, but it is definitely an insight, a definitely an understanding to look at it from a different perspective, to look at life from different, different areas. When you start looking at it, you'll eventually start looking at yourself as well. And you will eventually get an answer there, which you will get more further on when I give you a little more understanding on human relationships. Because you see, it's not the mind alone suddenly triggered off and decided, hey, I'm going to go sad. No, something has caused it, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Right? Somebody's comment, somebody said something to you, some issue or some problem that you've seen has caused it, right? So. Anything from these dynamics has happened to you, isn't it? No. Yeah. You have to first spot what has happened. It's like, it's like a spotting game. Rather than going inside, caving in, disconnecting, by knowing these things, you learn to spot. You learn to understand where the problem lies. You know, the most beauty of it is the moment you see or the moment you recognize a problem, half of the problem is solved. Did you know that? 
it's like for example i tell you um uh, who am i talking to please can i know your name i'm nikita hi okay nikita hi i'm sorry because i can't see the screen so nikita um imagine if i would tell you um hey nikita you know uh, every day you cross a road i'm just giving you example and um, there is a beautiful yellow laburnum tree there and you look at it and you like you love it and i come along and i tell you you know nikita there is something on that tree okay and i keep on telling you that nikita there is something on that damn tree hmm. you will start seeing it nikita <laughs> that's how the mind works it's as simple okay. as that i i try this out go go and do it at home tell somebody you know there's something in that corner freaking everybody in the house will see something in that corner yeah mind is a very nasty naughty little thing remember there is a reactive mind there's a mind that loves to control you there's a mind that wants to actually be cause on doesn't want you to be rational mind is divided into two parts rational irrational it always works like that it's sitting there dormant in a subconscious level will come up whenever you are feeling a little low okay yeah. and then i'll tell you further on how that works so he who can truly communicate to others is a higher being who builds a new world another one of the great quotes and this is a very interesting input on relationships why all this data why am i going to different you know a different arena about here i'm talking about the mind and suddenly i talk about life dynamics a triangle it just doesn't make sense right but you know it does why because your mind is very dependent on what people say to you your mind is very dependent on having an affinity towards things having the same reality being able to communicate your thoughts isn't it would you agree with me nikita on that yeah if i yeah, if i yes, yeah I, i mean a lot of others as well if i if i was um, okay if i was your best friend and suddenly today i decide i don't know i just stop talking to you how awful are you going to feel i mean without giving any explanation without giving any reason i just decide to disconnect it's going to drive you insane you love me to bits and you can't do without me and you just decide that's it right how easily i could control your mind how easily i could just bring you down from an emotion of being always happy to an emotion of being sad or lost and detached right this is what does to it a human relationship the understanding of really what a human relationship is all about it's simply just these three things try it out i'll tell you how i give an example of communication i'll give you an example of affinity you had some um okay you have affinity with something regarding this lecture today it could be affinity with your teacher affinity with the college affinity with the idea of what we talking about you decided to join it you had no affinity about it you had you didn't give a damn about it you won't join it right i'm not talking about love here i'm talking about the ability or the wantingness to be in the space same space maybe my face look nice or i don't know but there was some reason somebody everybody decided to join it there was an affinity would everybody agree with that yes ma'am yeah yeah you may not have reality on it of course because you don't know what am i going to talk about right what is reality can anybody tell me what is reality the sense of realism in the world yes so for example you and me agree that there is a tree there are cats there are dogs they are there 
tomorrow i turn around and tell you you know that cat is not a cat it's actually a dragon that's my reality i see it as a dragon it's not your reality what are we going to have here we're going to have a disconnect aren't we <laughs> we not we're going to have a fight right or we might you might just say i'm gone mad i need to go with myself go and show myself to a shrink right yeah exactly reality is that reality is something that is real to you okay and what really is communication a communication is what 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 does everybody understand by communication the the act of you know talking to and even the other person listens and replies that's like a good communication i like that how do you know that that's good that's actually damn good because mostly people don't consider communication as that communication is just talking to a lot of people to be able to be being able to say that's not communication communication is actually an ability to say and to receive the ability to be able to also understand and listen to be able to duplicate get a real picture of what the person is saying if i'm telling you cat remember when i told you to close your eyes and see cat you all saw cat i don't think anybody saw a dog right that was communication i communicated with you i sent you i actually told you to see him an image in your head that's duplication that what really is communication is the whole cycle of communication is actually that i am talking i am the starting cause point you are receiving you are in effect of what i'm saying then you you understand you get a duplication you get a image in your head or some kind of understanding in your head and you reply back that is now you are cause and i am in effect i am receiving is that understood by a lot yes yes yep so that is communication now how many of us do we really communicate actually are you really able to give your point out across to people are you really able to communicate sometimes sometimes no exactly right how enhanced is your communication skill how good are you able to actually put across what you want to say even if you're right or wrong it doesn't matter this whole thing is actually these three components are actually the only components that exist in simple understanding of human each other these are the only three factors that define understanding nothing else i'll tell you how i love you and i think you're like the best girl on earth i suddenly come up and tell you hey you know what let's do i say something that is completely unreal to you i mean i don't know you well so i'm just going to give an hypothetical thing and i mean say for example i love having apples and you hate apples and i say okay no let's have an apple pie and you said babe i hate apples i don't like apples so no 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 you've got to have an apple pie because i love it and i love you what is happening here our realities are not matching right your affinity towards me is dropping you're not at all liking it are you getting forced to do something you can't see my reality that i am so crazy and i love you and i want you to actually do everything that i do right and are we really going to communicate after that i force you to eat the most horrible thing of your life and you probably going through up are you going to ever talk to me tell me communication comes here sorry communication comes here yeah apple. you're not going to you're not going to talk to me i forced yeah. you to eat an apple pie or whatever whatever that you didn't like right yeah so the communication's gone 
how do we bring this back i mean it's gone or is it halted yeah kind of halted you withdraw you you sort of like what the hell she's crazy i mean you know maybe you try to talk about something else but won't it be restrained won't it be restricted will that be will there be a flow of uh, easy flow of love easy flow of understanding no not at all right what is happening to this triangle this triangle so there is no affinity there is no re or lessened affinity lessened reality lessened communication this triangle starts shrinking really shrinking what is happening to understanding it's going out of the window i'm talking about not just one thing it starts with one thing slowly 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 you stop having matching realities you stop having affinity you stop communicating these are the key factors of understanding again comes back to what happens to the mind you depressed you don't like it you are cut off from that area of your life from that person and you start withdrawing isn't it is it what it yes yes yeah imagine this again one of the three most important components and imagine you're working on it how are you going to work on this how are you going to understand what is communication what is affinity what is reality it's a big topic to tell you the truth today in the lecture i'm probably going to only cover one third of the whole knowledge that there is about life but yes at least these are the main main topics about it do let me know if my time is up huh? because i'm going to then wrap it up fast <laughs> so yeah sartha please you can tell me if the time is up and if it's getting boring <laughs> Ma'am, I think we can continue till the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. Good. Yeah. So yeah. So then the so then to increase this triangle, I'm not saying you force your reality or change your reality. You simple. There is this is a pen. I'm sure everybody can see me, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So this yes, pen. Okay. So this pen and. Um, it's a it's pen for everybody and i say hey you know what it's not a pen it's my sandal i'm deranged in my way but i call this my sandal and um obviously your reality my reality is not matching and but you are a more saner a more wiser person and you say okay fine it's a sandal you haven't disagreed or you haven't agreed with me you saw my reality there's something wrong with me i'm calling a simple pen a sandal there's something wrong i've probably disconnected from my mental state of being practical or rational and i call this a sandal but you have seen my reality and you just said okay fine you have not fought with me you have not debated with me you have not argued with me you have not even communicated about it with me but you also haven't alloyed or i could say spoiled your communication with me you have just continued to actually see it as it is it's fine she's going through something she sees it as a sandal imagine that now with anybody else for example you've got i'm just giving example mother is only concerned about you having food and you're like hey i'm talking about an emotional upset here and she's like oh no problem let me make something nice for you to eat that's mommy's love that's her reality for her every emotion is handled or any kind of loss of a girlfriend or a boyfriend is handled by eating something good do you get it a simple seeing somebody's reality is actually a solution to this whole mess of actually having fights having no understanding that's it just go out like literally out exterior to that game and see 
Imagine you watching a football game and you're the player there. And how are you going to play it? Or a chess board playing from both the sides. It's simple as that. It's tough. I know it's not easy. But start doing it from little, little things. For example, don't you see it in your dog or a cat? It has such funny realities. You accept it. And you still love it. And you still go around kuchikuing it. Right? And you still communicate with it. You can do that with your people around you. It's not that difficult. I'm telling you to start with small things. I'm not saying start with big things. It's tough to do big things. It's tough to accept big realities, which are, which are going to probably trouble you or hamper your growth. But small realities like what your mom says, what your dad says, what your girlfriend says, friend says, teacher says, I don't know. I don't know what individually everybody is going through. But yes, start from just looking at their reality as their reality and just letting it be. That's about it. That's one little exercise that you can start and try doing it. Um, I have a question. Sure. Who is what that? Nikita. OK, Nikita. Sorry, you know, I've got this big screen only in front of me, which is about the presentation. And I can't see anybody. So I'm very sorry. Yes. Yeah. So, OK, so you said that, OK, this is where you start. And you start seeing, it, seeing other people's reality. And you just let it be. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying this from like, like it's not as simple. When you see other people's reality, at some point you start expecting them also to see your reality. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> and that is where I that is where you communicate. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, my dear. I'm gonna come to that. That's the next topic. <laughs> I like it. You know, you're in sync. <laughs> you really go exactly as I'm going. A little going, going a little ahead of me here. I'm very happy. So yes, let's start with this first step. That's seeing a reality. OK? And we start with, yeah, this is just the end of it. The only richness there is understanding. Trust me, that's the only richness. Nothing else. And we come to actually a very beautiful chart first. It's called a human emotional tone. So what is tone? Can anybody tell me? The tone. I'm talking about uh, what do you understand by this word tone? Can somebody tell me that? Should I? It refers to like maybe it's tone of speech. If you're being yes. hard, maybe yes. calm or so. Exactly. The human, the pitch, the tone. And if you would read through these numbers, it says serenity. Uh, OK, so postulate is an English word, which actually means um, uh, you just decide what you want to do and you go for it. It's simple as that. I decide to uh, become an architect and I go for it. I decide to be a dancer, I go for it. I decide to just become, you know, lose weight, I go for it. It's like that. It's like a decision done and you go for it. It's a very strong human emotional tone level which is like, just go for it. So there are these various emotions. And trust me, I mean, don't go down further ahead. Just come down to um, yeah, numbness or apathy. There is apathy. Yeah, apathy. And that's 0 0.05. If you could just stick to that, you don't need to go down further. Um, this is exactly, if you could just read it, this is exactly Every human being goes through, sometimes in a day, sometimes in a week, sometimes in a year. You have traveled throughout. You have been in strong interest. You have been cheerful. You have been enthusiastic. You've been in you know, exhilaration. You've been in boredom. You've been in pain, anger. You've been with a lot of anxiousness, anxiety, fear. You feel numb. You feel grief. You feel like a victim. You feel hopeless. You feel apathy. Now, what is apathy? What does anybody understand as apathy? As the word apathy? 
can somebody tell me what apathy means sympathy i think no opposite is that i think you don't feel me no oh, sorry yeah so no sympathy is different sympathy is sympathy is like really having sympathy that you feel that oh my god like in hindi you know bichara but the moment you say bichara is sympathy okay and apathy is actually a state of where you are really numbed to things it's actually below numb but in a state where you are actually not being able to really see things so if i could give you the definition of apathy just give me a second sorry yep it's a very interesting definition so an apathy would be somebody who is okay so imagine if there is a alcoholic or a gambler okay or um when you take drugs or somebody who is very unwell who is literally bedridden and somebody who is actually lost somebody and is given up on everything doesn't want to he doesn't have any food drives doesn't feel like sleeping doesn't feel like doing anything that really would be an apathy isn't it would it or would it not have you can you think of an example of apathy can anybody think of an example okay i'll give you again a lack of emotion or feeling lack of interest in things generally found exciting interesting or moving indifference that's the definition of apathy you have no interest in doing anything it happens to a lot of us when we're not interested you have such a bad experience in something you just don't want to go there you're pretty apathetic towards it you don't even care whether it exists or not right so as a human being we travel all through these emotions but some of us are chronically stable on one one emotion some of us are on boredom some of us are on you know happiness some of us are on cheerfulness some of us are on fear because we kind of like to deal life in fear these are our emotions a person's emotions how he is dealing with life with himself with his environment and this is what helps us to see reality the complete understanding of a human emotional tone chart gives you an insight actually more than insight it gives you literally um a predictability chart of a person's behavioral pattern once you master this once you understand how to actually predict a person or spot the person his chronic chronic means what he really loves to be in like where his house is his home is the emotional state and so we all are in social veneer just understand that we all have a social veneer we all don't show our real selves it and even at home sometimes but chronically you do come to know when you live with a person that where exactly the person is and how he's good at handling problems how he's going to handle situations that emotional tone chart defines and helps you understand that see these are various faces of how people are enthusiasm how they look at serenity antagonism is actually again a term which is like um, you know saying um, a debater a person who loves to argue who's poor sport you know we like like we say things like stuff which is which is not very nice more on an anger but a little bit above anger 
the person is not angry angry but he's going to be very you know sharp bad words for you like that and this is what is actually going to help you understand reality once you understand a person's emotional tone once you understand where he is where you can spot him you will actually understand that there's no point trying to make him understand your reality for example if somebody was on a tone of anger okay nikita now yeah, i'm going to answer your question if somebody is on anger always on anger i mean he's happy he's okay sometimes but mostly he's angry and you go to him and you go and tell him about something that is doesn't really connect with him like for example you tell him about going out or to a party or i don't know something which is is going to definitely turn around and be angry at you he's not going to see your reality you tell him you want to go out with a couple of friends and sit and just to sit around and hang around and do nothing for him it's an absurd thing it's a waste of time somebody who's angry who's has an antagonism who is hostile towards in life is not going to understand your state of actually being in a cheerfulness why are you dancing around in the house i don't understand why can't you just sit with your books and study why can't you just sit in one corner and just don't do what you're doing reality that person is not going to see your reality so, but i'm not saying change your reality i'm not saying bring yourself down to same emotional tone it's like you matched you understood i'm seeing this as a pair of sandals or a, a single sandal and you just saw me that i'm actually in a state of maybe apathy or whatever or somewhere uh, useless i'm like i can't see things actually apathy <laughs> i'm not able to see this as a pen i'm so much in apathy that it looks like a freaking sandal to me what you going to do you just going to say okay yeah good and you go ahead you're not going to show your reality to me it's no point it's not going to be seen but yes there are different ways there are lots of ways to bring a person stone up you can always help the person once you have the knowledge about this stone and the person comes up the person does come up from anger to at least boredom or at least interested you have to get the person up to be interested to actually see your reality you cannot see your reality till you are to you are not able to bring the person up to your tone and how are you going to do that by not staying here and on a tone which is cheerfulness you have to understand his tone very well you have to understand his behavioral pattern you have to understand why he is behaving like this what are the causes what are the reasons that's causing this that is going to so again like i said it's not just simple stuff that i tell you or a mantra that i will tell you that go back home and okay say these few lines in your head and you're going to be all key fine no until you understand life in a way which is practical which is approachable with a simple data until you understand life which is scientifically given to you it's tough but it's not difficult it's funny yeah it's not that big a problem let me give you an example okay i i had a uh, when i started work okay I started work when I was in college. I had somehow managed to get a lot of work when I was in college. And yeah, I'm actually going to end it a little bit. So this is the last topic, last quote. Life is not much worth living if it is if it cannot be enjoyed. And yeah. So um So when I started work, since we're in the same profession, um I got a lot of projects on my lines. I suddenly guess I started getting farmhouses. I was in just second year, okay? And I'm in interior design, I'm not even an architect. And I started getting projects and I was like, "Whoa, you know, I'm good." 
and I started going out to work and I started going to various places to all the way to butting wines, which was like God for second place all alone. I'm not very tall. I'm a short, structured, tiny person easily can be <laughs> smothered and, you know, uh, squashed around, but no, I went and I did my work and, um, I was doing fine started stepping into a world which is bigger we started doing I got married and everything and I have a company architectural firm we started doing projects life gets you you start getting stuff on your lines you get clients you get people who who are going to be on a very low emotional tone who are not happy with your success who will be squashing you what do you do I was very disturbed. I used to get because I'm not I was never a good judge of people. My husband used to tell me that, you know, oh God, you're so naive. And um, I was happy with my naiveness, to tell you the truth. It made me what I am today. But this knowledge, this understanding actually brought about my mental sanity. I became so powerful over the this this whole concept of mind understanding. I could actually predict a person's next words his next behavior and um, that's how it is it's not just me we all are, can do that it's a knowledge that what we lack the manual to run a life is what we lack the understanding on the real real knowledge of life we are all you know qualified but we are, are we really educated? Do we really have an understanding on life? We know stuff, but we don't know really how to move around stuff. That's what is important. Yeah, so um, I don't know how much of my talk has helped everybody, but I would really want to now understand what you've gathered, what you've what you've you know figured out from it, please. Give me your inputs or any questions you'd like to ask. Give a lot of peace, ma'am. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad. Anything else? Anybody? Anybody wants to say anything? Anybody wants to? Yeah. Ma'am, I think it helps. Like, Sorry? Sorry, Nita, say. I was saying it helped make sense of a lot of things that you feel probably on a regular basis, but you don't, you can't like pinpoint it and you know, you question it. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all I can say is very simple, very, very simple, one small thing. Literally, each time, I know it's tough, one little mantra I can give you. Each time you have uh, a problem, each time you can't understand something or you're emotionally down, seriously, just go and stand outside in your balcony. Um, it's, it's a proper process, okay? Just go stand outside and look at things around you till they appear really close to you. Like, for example, just go stand outside and see a tree, see the bird. It will bring your orientation. So imagine we as human beings or spiritual beings, we love to have anchors around us. I mean, you know what I mean by anchors? Like a viewpoint. So when you go out, when you stand outside and you actually bring yourself back on the ground, you connect with things around you, you become very introverted when you have problems. This will extrovert you. And nobody else can extrovert you than the environment. Just do that. Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you can do that. That's going to be, a, that's very, very helpful. Just do that. Go sit alone in an open environment and just look at things. The most easiest solution to your mental problems. And then you can always connect with me. <laughs> yes, anybody else? Anybody else wants to say anything? Ask anything? 
You should have this more often. Huh? Oh, I can do it. <laughs> Man, this was great. It was lovely. I'm so glad. I'm so happy. Uh, you know, I really connect with. I don't know. I'm I'm not that young, but uh, since I've had a very happening youth, <laughs> and I've really done a lot of stuff, and I've explored the world, and I've done uh, good stuff, bad stuff, any kind of stuff. I still feel that I really connect with the, the youth a lot because I don't know. I just feel I I, I didn't have anybody telling me what to do. And I, I'm glad I've dived into this line. And um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm always there. A lot of you know, um, few people who are here are connected with me 24 by 7. They know they can message me anytime. Yeah, anytime. So. OK, um, before Sarthik comes and wraps it up, um, this is like really, really amazing. And thank you for your generosity. And what you've taught, you know, what you talked about were such basic values of, you know, patience for the other person and, you know, tolerance and connect. Yes. Yes. Um, would you mind if we uh, share your contact details and uh, the students yes, could get in touch with you through the Students' Council? Yes, ma'am, definitely. It would be a pleasure, definitely. I'm there for anybody because this time is very crucial and I understand um, the mind is really going through a lot. So... Yes. Um, this, completely. <laughs> and the monkey mind, how to control the monkey mind. And I, I find a lot of, uh, you know, resonance of Buddhist ideas in what you say that, you know, yes, if you want to receive, yes. you need to give. Yes. And yes. I'm sure you're going to receive a lot since you've given us a lot. So. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, all of you. It's I love the energy. Um, I couldn't see a lot, but I could perceive and feel it, like really helped me a lot. I'm so happy. I wish all of you a fabulous, fabulous life ahead. And like I said, just connect with me anytime. Thank you so much, Vibhuti, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity. A pleasure. Very you, honored. You just, you just, it was the universe who sent you to us. Oh, it was just so oh, timely and topical. It was just amazing. Oh, that is so sweet. Oh, I'm getting emotional. Thank you so much, ma'am. <laughs> Could you want to wrap it? Yes, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Yeah. Hi. So, uh, ma'am, during these unprecedented times, we all know it's hardly, you know, possible for us as students or as humans to, you know, ignore what is going around us. However, it is equally important for us to, you know, keep ourselves mentally sound and strong so that mm -hmm. we have the energy and we are able to face these circumstances. Yes. So, ma'am, I would like to thank you on behalf of the students of SSA and we are highly obliged and would like to express our gratitude for devoting your time and being here with us and sharing your positivity and i'm pretty sure that all of us have a better idea with your words to you know and an idea of a direction uh, of how we can tackle these situations so yes on behalf of the student body i would like to thank you for your encouraging words your motivation and your supportive words and thank you and have a nice day ma'am thank you so much Tarthak. it was thank it you. was a pleasure all i can say is it was a Deep spiritual pleasure. That's all. Thank you. Wish you all a fabulous day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Can we stop recording?